unsolved crimes newspaper as a response to Cavalier civil society organization within the framework of a struggle against religious extremism presents. In this video fragments, you can see a radical unit of an anti-cult organization doing its regular commercial order to eliminate undesirable competitors. The anti-cult movement uh, is in a deep crisis. <laughs> of the anti-cultists looking for new cults. We are trying to count people against cults, against so-called hate monger organizations that hate people. Adherents of sects are miserable people that became victims of these organizations. They need cults because cults keeping them in business. I think we will meet and discuss everything at home. We love you so much and we are waiting for you, your grandmother, your dad and all other relatives, especially Nikita. Parents will not give money, governments will not give money, churches will not give money, so they will uh, be desperate. I believe that it is the most horrifying cult in Odessa. If their business stay as it was once, uh, they are doomed, they will go bankrupt uh, and people will like working and daughters will lose their jobs. More than 50 years, billions of people have become victims of religious extremism. It's a multi-level system. One of its key mechanisms is labeling made-up labels as a totalitarian sect and a destructive cult. There was ones who attacked, ones who had to deal with multi-million dollar losses, ones were helping the spread of this cancer tumor. Over the last 50 years, there was no systemic solution to this phenomenon. However, in 2014, a group of French, Ukrainian and Russian extremists made a mistake. They have chosen an extremely unfortunate target to attack. Actually, by pretending to be so sweet and cute, Alec Maltsev defrauds people of their money, apartments, deceives them. I wrote about illegal activities that are done by this cult. This girl who was learning by heart that she is an idiot, we managed to rescue from the cult. A long rehabilitation period is waiting her. Maltsev doesn't let anybody to live easily. So I believe you are targeted because they desperately need to find new cults and new parents concerned with cults who will, will give money to them. Massimo Introvigne, doctor of philosophy, professor of sociology of religion, founder and managing director of the Center for Studies on New Religions. A great specialist in the field of sociology of religion. He is an advisor of leading governmental and non-governmental institutions, as well as a number of specialized organizations in Europe and the United States. We saw a fascinating movement, but very disturbing for you, I understand, of the anti-cultists looking for new cults. They need cults, because cults keeping them in business. As a result of attacks from extremist groups, applied scientists Oleg Maltsev have no choice but to create a unique system which is able not only to prevent, but to seize activities from religious extremists. We constructed a system that can protect legitimate interests of citizens, legal entities and certain circles from such a phenomenon which is like a cancer tumor and is called religious extremism. Oleg Maltsev, lawyer, financier, chief founder of the public association Cavalier. Its key task is combating religious extremism, regardless of the country and dominating religion. The film is of value for every rational individual 
who doesn't want to be robbed or destroyed one day in a coincidental way. Anti-cult was born among secular people, non-religious people in the United States in the late 60s. So the ideas of the anti-cult uh, movements were largely uh, put together by a psychologist called Margaret Singer. She was uh, Jewish but atheistic. What she did was to take the material about brainwashing and to apply it to cults. Because who wants a flood, a hurricane, a, an earthquake? And cult leaders almost always say that if you follow their rules, it will help change the world and make it perfect. Despite the fact that in academic world the notion of brainwashing was officially recognized to be unscientific. It's a myth created for political propaganda and its application to religious groups is particularly non-scientific. Anti-cultists transformed the term brainwashing into a tool to intimidate ignorant grey masses. However, according to Professor Intervini, the anti-cultists are in a state of a deep crisis, despite the whole made-up arsenal of fictional horror things such as totalitarian sects, destructive cults and brainwashing theories. They could not survive just attacking these groups. And so they started going after psychological groups, economic groups, philosophical groups, uh, psychotherapy groups, uh, like uh, you, which uh, have nothing to do with religion. These people are criminals. You cannot immediately bring them to justice as they operate using other people. It requires long investigations, detective, judicial and journalistic is inescapable. What could be said about legal aspects of such struggle? Certainly, in juridical terms, it is not simple. Why is it so? Because those people who will fight against you are not simple ones. They have certain status in a society. Oftentimes, it is the status of a journalist and of a human rights activist. There is a question. Why do anti-cultists use service of based journalists so often? So I would say that while they were defeated in courts and defeated in politics, the anti-cultists won in the media. The majority of the popular media in the West believe brainwashing exists and cults using brainwashing exist. Don't think that belief of certain journalists in fearful cults and brainwashing theory is blind and innocent. There is money and cold math that stands behind this belief. Journalists listen to those who have a more sexy story. Mm -hmm. And of course, the stories about uh, destructive cults, uh, brainwashing, uh, terrible things uh, happening to innocent people, uh, uh, they make good copy, they sell in the media. And so they are much more sexy than uh, saying, you know, this is just part of a religious pluralism, spiritual pluralism, philosophical pluralism, and we need some sociological tools to study. That's not very sexy for selling newspapers. <laughs> but if you can say destructive cult operates in your city, people will buy newspapers. Yeah. As you see, interests of anti-cultists and dishonest journalists absolutely comply with each other. Moreover, this interest is paid by money, and not a small amount of money. How do they make money? By destruction and robbery. What are they trying to destroy? Someone else's business and reputation. Whom are they robbing? Ones whom religious extremists turn into financiers. We will talk about them a little later. It's clear that they violate a huge number of articles of the constitution of countries, including the right to freedom of conscience and the religious freedom. In fact, everything starts with the refutation of the human rights to believe in whatever person wishes and the rights to convert to any religion.
All these rights are guaranteed by Ukrainian constitution and the international law. The most important thing is that you shouldn't violate other person's rights. You may believe even in the cactus that grows on the moon. It's your own business. No one has a right to impose his or her own opinion, beliefs, worldview to the other. It is against law. In order to do this kind of commercial activity, anti-cultists had to justify their actions before the society. So they came up with a stressful excuse. We save people from cults. In this case, it's not so important whether a particular organization has any relation to religious activity or whether it commits any crimes. The main thing is that rescue motive looks noble in the eyes of society, which means they may start attacking and implementing next commercial order. This is how one of the key issues of this film looks like. Who benefit from anti-cult organizations? From whose silent permission all these activities are carried out? Who finances all these structures? That's an interesting question. Normally uh, they uh, have three sources of uh, financement. Three sources, parents, governments and churches. It becomes quite interesting. What are parents doing in this list and how are they able to finance activities of religious extremists? Anticult was born among secular people, non-religious people in the United States in the late 60s. These are very secular parents, never gave a religious education to their children and the children have been sent mostly to California to study in a prestigious university, to become lawyers, doctors, accountants. And they phone the parents and say, you know, I'm quitting the university because I want to work full time for Reverend Moon, for free. He will not pay me. Or I want to go and become a monk in India. Or I want to spend all your money to take courses in Scientology. And so these parents were completely surprised because they said my children was never interested in religion. And so they had to come out uh, with something different from counter cultism and pure religion, false religion, and to say our children have been brainwashed. Let's remember that in the first film, scientists Massimo Introvigne and Oleg Maltsev gave detailed answer to this question why people are discontent with traditional religions. It all comes down to the fact that everything person has stops satisfying him and he desires to live differently. That's how this search begins. And if parents are not able to find answers to their child's questions and provide him a lifestyle to which he aspires, a child starts looking for people that are able to solve this problem. Actually, it's quite simple. Most people are not satisfied with their way of life. Children don't want to live life of their parents, so they start looking for something better. Nevertheless, it was difficult for the parents to admit their weakness. It's difficult for an adult to admit that he is unable to give his child a life perspective. Certain entities got a hold of such circumstances to their advantage. But the anti-cult movement gave a completely secular explanation, saying that our children have been victims of abusive psychological techniques. So if they decide that rather than become a lawyer or a doctor, they want to become a missionary for Reverend Moon or a monk in India with the Hare Krishna, they have been subject to psychological techniques. And these psychological techniques should be made illegal. However, everything turned out to be the other way around. Term as brainwashing was recognized to be not scientific. The deprogramming, which was earlier described in one of our programs, is forbidden now in almost all countries on the world. All methods are not longer useful. 
and they realize they need to redefine the very notion of cult by including like psychological group, anthropological, philosophical. So every day they wake up and say, where can we find a new cult? And that's why they found uh, you. We will take you home, then I will show you. What will you show me? I said we will show you. I can't. How can I be sure that you are not going to give me to the police again or put me in the prison or a psychiatric clinic? I invite everyone. Well, needless to say, I have been a law practitioner for 12 years. I will tell you that during this time I have never seen such things. That is Antonina Yelova was the first one of this kind of people that I saw. And she can't even explain her behavior. What are you talking about? I'm not scared. Even 10 years, I'm not afraid. I don't want to be kept. I wish I could make decisions by myself. Yulia, come here. There is no need to go anywhere. Don't video record, please. Don't even try. Just touch the camera and you will end up in jail. To be honest, I don't even know what to tell you, mom. Just look into my eyes, look how they shine, and see how happy I am. Can you see that? Why do all people around believe and support me, except my closest and dearest person, a woman who gave birth to me? Because I'm not sure that you are my closest and dearest person. You say that you lost your daughter, but you lost your daughter right in the moment when you wrote to the police a false application against her. I, you know, I... So what if I filed for support? You may be given a term from three to five years in prison. What are you talking about? I'm not afraid, even if it's ten years. There is the evidence of how the Ukrainian ordinary rural teacher Antonina Yelovaya turned into a criminal offender as a result of religious extremist group activities. She filed a false report to the police against her daughter. She has conducted illegal drug tests without her daughter knowing about it. She made policemen to cooperate with her for money. They claimed that our organization is engaged in slave trade of women abroad. As you would understand, criminal cases were filed against her for false report to police. See how many articles of the criminal law were violated only by the one person. But how can this be? What should have happened so that a rural teacher would commit eight criminal offenses? So the first source of financement is the parents. Parents who want to rescue or save their children from the cults. And of course they need to persuade parents that children are in the cults because they need the money, so otherwise the parents would not ask for exit counseling or intervention. That's number one. Question. Who of the religious extremists in this case was marketing his services and was trying to convince Antonina Yelovay that her daughter got into a cult? Meet the journalist Dmitry Bakayev. In Antonina Yelovay's case, he has played one of the major roles. This girl who was learning by heart that she is an idiot, we managed to rescue from the cult. A long rehabilitation period is waiting for her. Maltsev doesn't let anybody to live easily. Mr. Bakayev doesn't even hide his relations with religious extremists. Here is a fragment of the correspondence of a journalist Dmitry Bakayev Odessa with a psychologist Alexander Niveev Moscow, who calls himself an expert in fighting against sects and destructive cults. Niveev has the same views with Alexander Dvorkin. He steps in with Dworkin as an expert and strongly demonstrates the loyalty to anti-cultist ideals. A rural teacher, Antonina Yelovaya, has got into such a group of advisors and counselors. Besides, Mrs. Yelovaya got an idea to file a false report to police from ferocious fighter against cults, psychologist Alexander Niveev. If you see even least signs of deception thought that you are being cheated by the cult, the Academy of Slavic Applied Sciences, you should write about such case to Ukrainian police. No need for any trials. 
As you can see, religious extremist advice do not end well. And it has always been this way, from the beginning of an anti-cult movement. The anti-cult movement uh, uh, originally were a group of parrots, secular parrots who were concerned uh, with the fact that their children joined these strange uh, movements. Originally they were just parrots, mm -hmm. but then these parents uh, uh, started going to see two types of professionals, psychologists and lawyers. And this is true. For a long period of time, psychologist Alexander Niveyev has been carrying out his anti-cult activities in cooperation with a lawyer, Yuri Abramov. They wanted to drive Mrs. Yalavaya to extreme state and receive maximum amount of money from a rural teacher. In this case, it would be ideal for religious extremists if a person was ready to do everything or almost everything to save his or her child from a cult. We will sell our apartment and car, but this scoundrel who doesn't even know how to write words correctly, your great scientist who receives money from people by deceiving them. It seems that something was done to this person. I'm sure psychologists were working with her in this case, as she is extremely aggressive and ready to sell everything she has. You know, there is even an audio recording, in which she told that she is ready to sell her apartment, car and all her property, so that only to harm Mr. Maitsev, whom she didn't see before. In consequence, Antonina Yelavaya became a financer of Russian and Ukrainian extremist groups. Eight criminal cases were filed against her. But the most important thing is that she has deteriorated her relations with her daughter for a long time. I don't want to be treated like a thing, and I want my mother to understand it. She had many opportunities, and I told her what has to be done so that we get back to the way we are in touch before. Instead of taking at least some steps towards the reconciliation, recognizing her mistakes, she did so much shit in order to justify her wrong actions. As for such journalists as Dmitry Bakayev, who played one of the major roles in the tragedy of this family, Yulia speaks about him very clearly and categorically. My name is Yulia Yalavaya. Even though I am no longer an employer of Redut Law Company, just I still find it necessary to express my own opinion about the long-awaited program by Dmitry Bakayev, which is broadcasted in Domsky Resource. You have disappointed me very much, Mr. Bakayev. I agree to give you an interview, as I was expecting an objective journalistic investigation, objective reportage that would include facts, evidences and other things. I didn't see anything of this. You present the information in the profitable way for you. Why didn't you say that I don't want to communicate with my mother because she couldn't admit her wrong actions? And there are tears in my eyes when I talk about the closest and dearest person in this world because he put a knife in my back and betrayed me. I understand that there will always be such creepy, two-faced, corrupt journalists like you, Mr. Bakayev, especially in our notorious city of Odessa. This petition is not even for you, but rather for people who really want to find out objectivity. Let me remind you that Professor Intravenia pointed out the parents, church and governments as key sources of founding the anti-cult organizations. The situation involving parents in the financing the anti-cultists is now cleared. Let's take a look at the second source, the church. If they manage to ally with the counter-cult, they can get money from the churches. That's the case with Dorkin. Dorkin gets money from the Orthodox Church. But why does Russian Orthodox Church needs to interact with such religious extremists as Alexander Dvorkin? Counter-cult is the movement within a fixed religion. So we say we are the Catholic religion, 
we have the truth. So if we take a child and we indoctrinate uh, in the truth, it's all right. If uh, Jehovah's Witnesses take a child uh, and indoctrinate in their doctrine, which is a false doctrine, that's bad. So the truth is good, the falsehood is bad. But that's the counter cult. By the way, in the case of Antonina Yelavaya, we also see some traits of a church. Don't sell your parents for money, you will be sorry later, you are being deceived. These fears are irrational, I mean there is no logic in them. Also, there is no logic in the accusations, the accusations appear to be extremely irrational, from fears. You are godless, I am giving you the opportunity, as you won't escape the God's punishment. Everything is clear. Here you can see that there is a very powerful struggle on the other side. All roads lead to the temple, go and pray. They are good professionals. The fact is that in times of socialism none of the secretaries of the Communist Party could argue with a churchman at any case. I am sure that there are people of church that are responsible for this project. God gives me things, so I don't need it. Spiritually I am more rich than you. Here we see that a person came out of the reality and objectivity. He is surely under the influence of the religious worldview. Antonina Yelavai is a bright example of how the anti cultists and persons who have direct relation to Russian Orthodox Church turn people into controlled torpedoes, which are then direct towards undesirable persons and organizations. These people are very much intimidated, and with certain people, What's going on? People who carried out attacks on our businesses and against Oleg Maltsev were watching who was employed at our companies. Then they found parents of these people and intimidated they by the fact that Oleg Maltsev had a cult where the various crimes against the employers of the company were regularly committed. In the end, parents being unable to assess the situation rationally, without having their own opinion, started attacking Mr. Maltsev and our companies like the torpedoes or kamikazes. However, there is another striking example, when the counter-cult and anti-cult movements unite not only into an organization, but they also create their joint media products. Just imagine a November evening when the members of our law company were engaged in their business and Oleg Maltsev, who is also an employer of our law company and scientist, the director of the Scientific Research Institute, the International Fate Analysis Community, was busy with his scientific work. Suddenly we received a phone call from a journalist Maria Kavalova. She said that she was making a reportage about Oleg Maltsev for more than a week. This reportage had to come out in a day, so if we want, we could surely give the interview and take part in her journalistic investigation. But if we didn't want to be interviewed, there would be a program about Oleg Maltsev anyways. We knew that if the program had to be out in a day and they let us know about that fact only the day before its release, so the program had to be out despite the fact that we didn't take any part in that investigation. The victims are looking for him all over the Europe, but he settled in Odessa. Is Oleg Maltsev a great scientist or a big scoundrel? Answers are in our investigation. As you can see, there are already familiar faces in the reportage. For example, Yuri Abramov from Moscow, a religious extremist and colleague of Alexander Niveev and Alexander Dvorkin. Also, Tata Markova, a representative of the Orthodox Church, stands as the one of the speakers and represented in the program rather natural. Sometimes another definition is used, I mean the term totalitarian destructive cult. Probably one of the main features is a cult of a charismatic leader. Maltsev came to the point that he asked everyone to call him the king. Actually, Tata Markova is a bright representative of an apologetic branch of Russian Orthodox Church in Odessa. She is a teacher at Sunday school at the St. Alexei Temple. She used this activity as her cover. 
please note that so-called culture theorist Markova used the terms which were invented by an anti-cultist Dworkin in the mid-90s. It happened so that in Russia I was the first who started learning this phenomena and consequently I was the first who used the term totalitarian sect. So absolutely accidentally I was the first who used it. It's obvious that the term was on the tip of everybody's tongue because its people started using it right away. Sometimes another definition is used, I mean the term totalitarian destructive cult. After the exposure of the reportage by Maria Kavalyova, the counter-cult movement in the face of Tata Markova and a group of church councillors hid themselves in the shade in order not to disgrace the religious forces standing behind them. Let me remind you that the purpose of this report was the destruction of business reputation of Oleg Maltsev, director of the Scientific Research Institute, the International Fate Analysis Community. Also, let's remember how that unsuccessful attempt ended for the journalist Maria Kavalyova. <laughs> and what have I stolen? Oh my God, what are you doing? He tried to rape me. He came up to me and touched me with his hands. He pesters me. Call the police. I climbed on the roof so he didn't touch me. Listen, if they touched your pussy, how would you prove it? By the way, Maltsev is fat and ugly. However, long before dances of the roof of the law company, journalist Maria Kavalyova did another even bigger foolish thing. In her reportage, she tried to represent a citizen of Ukraine, Olga Gutovska, as a victim. Olga Gutovska was literally stripped on her underpants. Now she works in a lingerie store, but two years ago she owned a jeep and was expecting a share on the business during divorce. She complains that Maltsev personally promised her to give all those benefits. Olga Gutovska came to us with a problem. She couldn't pay a car loan, which was $30,000. By that time she had already paid part of the loan, but she couldn't pay the rest of it, and that car was given to the bank bail. So she was forced to give a car for a rent in Odessa, so that the bank couldn't take it from her. She paid the loan from money rent from car rental. But when she met Oleg Maltsev, she had accumulated a debt of $3,000, which she couldn't pay and bank was going to take away her car. I drew up an agreement according to which Oleg Maltsev undertook to pay her debt, to pay the rest of her loan in the amount of $10,000. In the end, he gave her extra money, took the car and completely repaired it. The repair costed about $10,000. However, someone decided to turn Mrs. Gutovska into a financier of religious extremists. So, Olga Gutovska filed a deliberately false report to the Porto Franco police station about a crime. In this report, she said that her car was stolen that night, despite the fact that there are documents which state that the car was handed over to Oleg Maltsev a year and a half ago. Certainly, we resolved this question at Law Enforcement Agency. The data on a false denunciation was entered in the Unify register of the pre-trial investigation. How can words of such a person be taken seriously? But religious extremist Maria Kavalyova threw that Gutovska was able to play a certain role in her reportage. However, Kavalyova was wrong. Olga Gutovska filed played her best role at the Primorsky court when she had to repent in order to be bailed. Olga Gutovska admitted that she filed a deliberately false report about the crime. As you remember, Antonina Yelovaya acted in the same way. It is called a false accusation. Do you plead guilty to the fact that you filed such a false report. Yes, and I am very sorry. Do you plead guilty? I plead guilty, and I am really very sorry. It is obvious that the manner and character of the actions are the same. Whose advice did they implement? Who were their counselors? 
You have to write an application about such cases to the Ukrainian police. There is no need for any trails. We should know that methods that are used by anti-cultists and counter-cultists are of the same type, and they are algorithmic. Mainly, it's an appeal to law enforcement agencies, usage of ones who speak on web, internet trolling, using people the torpedoes fired from a submarine at ship, or usage as a dog or a monkey. I mean a dog is unleashed, a monkey comes to your office and starts tearing up the curtains, crashing computers and so forth. They can come to your office and make a scandal, an uproar. They can organize meetings near your office. They can do everything. And all the things remind me of an episode of the film A Man from the Boulevard de Capucins. What can you do for money? I can do everything for money. Regardless of the country and social status, religious extremists have only two goals to rob and to destroy. There is always a customer and a financer. Anyone can become the next victim. It can be a businessman, politician, sportsman, academic or a person growth coach. The anti-cults are omnivorous. It is important to understand that there is a solution to this problem, regardless of who is founding such criminal activities – parents, state or church. Now religious extremists have only one perspective in their life, and it's a dog. Remember, a person who agreed to cooperate with the religious extremists always sit down on a dog. There is no doubt that a dog is waiting for him. However, the question remains, how long will it take? When criminal proceedings are already initiated, there is no doubt that sooner or later this person will get a sentence. I have been working in this area for a long time, but I have never seen a person with such a legal mindset as Oleg Maltsev. What allowed us to stop these attacks? You know, when I interviewed Patricia Duval, my colleague from France, she immediately answered my question what to do in such situation. She said, contra-attack. Everything happened exactly this way. The team consisted of religious extremists such as Dvorkin, Niveev, Abramov, Kavalova, Kasim, Lysy, Bakayev, Mikhailenko and Podnebesne, they were stopped. We cannot say that it is not possible to bring them to justice. It's not true. You can sue journalists. But trail will take a very long time. That's why we need completely different methods of struggle with them. It must be a method that will make their blood freeze in their veins, but it must be done strictly within the framework of the legislation. I mean, the blood may freeze even within the framework of the existing legislation. More than 10 criminal cases are initiated against all those persons. Currently some of them are under criminal investigation. In addition, one of the journalists, Dmitry Mikhailenko, strangely put an end to his career. Lawyer Yuri Abramov, Moscow, also strangely tapped his legal practice. According to an operation information, he became a taxi driver. I believe that in such situations people should actively protect themselves. One should never let anyone to slid mud at Udell, as it is just a first step. There will be always set up of a certain public opinion. Later you will receive an application about a criminal offense committed by you. And it doesn't matter whether you committed this crime or not. By that time they will have already formed this public opinion. But if you want to leave, you have to defend yourself. If you want to continue your existence, you have to defend yourself. That is my position.